Today we continue with the key points in the mission. As we already know about the CAS system, how to build up the collision avoiding system. Use the mono camera and we how we calculate the time to collision use the mono camera, right? And we also know the camera is not able to measure distance to the object directly. And for our collision system, avoiding system, we compute the time to collision uh, relies on the relative distance ratio on the image sensor. You remember that? I will go back a little bit right here, show you a uh, formula to calculate the time to collision. This formula is rely on the ratio between the height of the object on the image plane, right? And after that, I mentioned a little bit about the key point uh, to calculate the ratio, right? And right here we select the key point distance between the successive frame, two successive frame right here, t equal zero and t equal one right here. So now we figure out what the key point on the image and how we define the location of the key points. For the, uh, the key points right here, you can see maybe the lines look like resembles a line from the bottom left uh, to the upper right. The middle resemble the middle picture right here is of the corner uh, formed by the group of the very dark pixel right here in the upper left. And the last one right here, we have the right a right blob that might be approximate and by ellipse, right? Actually, right. In order to locate key points in image, we need a way to assign unique coordinates both S and Y. So look at this one, you can have the similar thing happen to both the key points right here, to all the key points right here. That's the change, the gradient, the intensity of the pixel uh, right here. Right here, you see, you see that. So we talk about the intensity gradient. The contrast between the neighboring pixel contain the information we need. The intensity gradient help us to get the key points. In order to in order to precisely locate the corner of this one, or for example, the corner, we don't need to know its color, but we need to know about the color difference between the pixel. Okay, that's from the corner to be as high as possible. An ideal corner would consist of only uh, black and white pixels. And I have another uh, picture right here. So you intensity profile of all the pixels along the red uh, lines in the image as well as the intensity gradient, uh, which, which is the derivative of image uh, intensity Right here, we have the image and uh, how the visual along this rest. Um, right here, you can see how they um, change the intensity and they change the gradient for all the visual along the red line right here. So it can be seen that intensity profile increasing rapidly as positions where contrast uh, between the neighboring visual trends significant. So if we want to assign a unique coordinate to the pixel where the trends occur, we could do by looking at the derivative of the intensity, which is blue gradient right here of the profile, and the sudden trends in the image intensities are very clearly visible as this is this distant peaks and valleys in the gradient profile. The transfer here maybe happen in the vertical or horizontal, or both horizontal and vertical. I mean the transfer here. You can look at the base. Okay, the base right here. They show you how the trends rapidly. Okay, from the bright color and dark color. So based on the observer observation, okay, we uh, the first step into key point detection is the, the computation of the gradient image. So mathematically, the gradient is a partial derivative of image intensity into both S and Y direction. Okay, we have the, the derivative intensity in S, in Y, in S and Y. 
when so far the magnitude and direction of the gradient right here. That's the derivatives for s and y. And this formula, you can calculate the magnitude and gradient direction together. So when we calculate the radian, one thing happen uh, impact to calculation is the noise. The most straightforward approach would be simply compute the intensity difference between the neighbor and so This approach, uh, however, is extremely sensitive to the noise and how to avoid the noise in the picture. Okay, before we calculate the this one, the, uh, the chain of uh, intensity, the gradient, we have to apply the image filter and Gaussian smoothing. Okay, we need to think about noise, which is present in all images. Okay, and with decreasing and uh, with decrease with the increasing light intensity to counteract noise, especially under the low light condition, a smoothing operator has to be applied to the image before gradient computation. The, usually we use the Gaussian filter is used for this purpose to shift over the image and combine with intensity value beneath it. And two important thing into the Gaussian filter is a standard, standard deviation. Okay, we control the spatial instance in the future in the image plan and the other kernel side which define how many pixels around the center location to contribute to the smooth operation. Here is the Gaussian smoothing work right here as the assigned each pixel a weighted sum of the surrounding pixel based on the height of the Gaussian curve uh, as its points. The logic contribution will come from central pixel itself. Whereas the contribution from the visual surrounding will decrease and depend on the height of the Gaussian curve and its standard deviation. So it's a little bit uh, confusing, right? So how to apply the Gaussian future, okay, to reduce the noise, okay, we have to follow for each step. The first one, we have to create the kernel. Kernel is more matrix right here. They have the anchor points in the middle of the material here. It's different from the matrix of the picture, the big one, right? And the first one, create the future kernel with desired property, okay? The second one, you define the anchor points right here with the within the kernel, okay? And place it on the top of the first pixel of the image. And the third, we compute the sum of products, the first right here. You have to use this formula to get the sum of products of the kernel coefficient with the corresponding image pixel values, okay? And the four, the place the bis, play the result to the location of the kernel anchors in the input image. And you repeat the process uh, for all the pixel and time image, okay? Uh, the first one, we had defined the kernel, we had and then we had to define the anchor points right here, and we calculate that we run the kernel through all the image, and we calculate the sum of all the products between the kernel and the value of the image. Uh, uh, yeah, value on the image right here, and then you had to repeat all process. I show you so the right here is easy to have you understand right here. For example. You have the kernel three by three right here, right? Uh, and this is the value three by three. And we have the image right here. You had to apply this kernel into this picture. You run all the kernel, look at the rest matrix. You run all the kernel right here, from left to right, from right to right. Every time you move in, you can see the value, for example, right here, they calculate the sum of the products uh, between the kernel value right and the values on the image right here you can see in the middle right here right here this is a value created by some of the products right here and they attach to the output right here you see every time you move in they create a new value we saw right here that's the way they use the kernel or for example I you show you how to shop the picture output they have different value for the kernel. And they run the kernel around the picture, image picture, all right, image right here. And they have the new value right here for the output. It's made the output more sharp, right? That's the purpose of the kernel. I hope you understand and you can play with that.
Okay, go back to the uh, Gaussian blur. Okay, a filter kernel of a Gaussian smoothing is so right here. A is a 3D Gaussian curve, and right here the corresponding discrete filter kernel. Remember and uh, can see with the central anchor points right here is a large value and around in the small value and then small small value okay corresponding to the maximum of the Gaussian curve and with the decreasing value toward the S circular shape right here you can see the decrease in the value it shows the uh, Gaussian future and right here you can see that that's the kernel. Okay, kernel is the matrix, tiny matrix right here. And the base matrix right here is the image. Okay, how do you know about that? And after we smoothing the image to reduce the influence of the noise, we can compute the intensity com gradient of the image in both X and Y direction. So we have several ways um, to compute the gradient. First one, you use the Sobor's operator or Sharp's operator. The Sobor's operators, they based on the small integer value future both in the horizontal and vertical. Right here, you can see the, we use Sobor operator, you uh, calculate radians, okay, computation in the S and right here in the Y. And right here, is you will see the code right here in the next video. I talk about little detail about the code, how to apply the servo, uh, servo uh, in X direction and Y direction and to blur or to uh, the image or uh, to reduce the noise to calculate the gradient, instantive uh, gradient. The next video, very easy. The first time you right here, you can see how the the result in the gradient image. So right here, um, it can be seen the area of a strong local contrast, such as the cast shadow of the piercing vehicle list the high value filtering image right here. And right here, we can apply both S and Y direction. You can show that, okay. So generally, in this session, I hope you understand the definition of the key points, okay? And why we use the key points, and how we uh, use the intensity, okay? Uh, of instantity gradient to get the key points, okay? And after that, we how we compute the gradients image in S in Y, okay? And magnitude direction of the gradient. Okay, we use the sobers, okay, operators. And after that, we, before we do this, we had to apply the future image or to Gaussian blur smoothing to reduce the noise right here, to reduce the noise. And after that, we calculate the computation, the uh, gradient. That's the three things you have to know. And you have to know a little bit about the kernel. Why we use kernel for image processing to Okay, apply for the um, for the uh, uh, Gaussian blurring or and how we do that and see you next video for programming C blah blah.